Coming up this week... A Burns. What's a Burns? Whenever I see something like interesting for that amount of money, I can't help it, you know. That could make a good little review, couldn't it? Click buy. What a great sounding guitar. Sounds nothing like a strap. Thank heavens. We use the whammy bar a little bit. Actually, a couple of times, it looked like I knew what I was doing as well. I didn't. Pure luck. Burns London, I'm on your side. I think it's high time we showed those yanks a thing or two about good old fashioned British design. Yeah. Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. So this week, I bought another new guitar to review. Here it is. It's a Burns. Yeah. A Burns. What's a Burns? I mean, it, it's not such a familiar brand to a, to a lot of you, is it? Some of you will remember it. They were very big in the 60s. And, and this, of course, is a, it's an, it's a... It's another retro reissue of... Um, an iconic British brand. Yeah, iconic. That's, that's the only way to describe them. This is what they call an SSJ. Burns SSJ. Look, it says it there on the headstock. That stands for Short Scale Jazz Guitar. That's what they call this, the Burns Short Scale Jazz Guitar. And this is a reissue of a guitar that was launched, I believe, in 1962. Back when, well, back in the Burns heyday. Yeah. And now I saw this on, um, on a couple of online guitar websites this week. And I'd, I'd, never, I'd, never, I'd never given Burns guitars much of a second look because the one that, the one that you might, probably or most of you will remember is the Burns Bison or the Burns Marquee, which looked pretty similar. That's the marquee. It's, it's the big old, big old thing, isn't it? It's, it, looks, it looks like a big old thing, doesn't it? And I've always looked at that and I thought, I don't know about that. So I've just kind of never, never given it a second thought. Anyway, this week, I'm on, um, I'm on a couple of websites. I'm on Anderton's and I'm on Guitar Guitar. And they're selling these. And I saw this one. Look, little... It's sweeter, isn't it? It's it's just looks to my eye a bit. Oh, that looks that's all right, doesn't it? Two pickups. It's got a whammy bar. We'll put that in in a little while. And uh, well, the killer was I managed to buy this for two hundred and ninety nine English pounds. And uh, whenever I see something like interesting for that amount of money, I can't help it, you know. As I've said before, I'm like a magpie. Oh, shiny guitar, different, intriguing, interesting. That could make a good little review, couldn't it? Click buy. So that arrived yesterday. And I've just unboxed it on the TV channel for you lot. So you'll see that. Um, and now I'm going to review it for all you YouTubers. So here we are. Yeah. That was the intro, okay? That was quite, a, that was all right, wasn't it, that intro? What I'm going to do now is um, we'll get into the meat and potatoes. We'll do a little bit of history on birds. Well, what I've learned so far, which isn't that much, but we'll have a little talk about them. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through all the specs. Weigh it, take the strings off, measure up the neck, take some pickup readings, and take it apart and have a look under there and all that and stuff, and then play it and see what it sounds like. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Don't forget, timestamps are in the description box if you're in a bit of a hurry. If not, go and get a drink and some nibbles and join us. So, a brief history of Burns, a British company founded in 1959 by James Ormston Burns, or Jimmy Burns to his friends. Now, Jimmy Burns was widely considered to be a British equivalent of uh, Leo Fender. 
in the early 60s, it wasn't easy to get Fender and Gibson guitars, the American guitars here in, here in England. So Burns was, was kind of a leading manufacturer at that time and certainly the most successful British manufacturer. In, um, yeah, he was an innovator. 1961, the Burns Bison, I understand, was a four pickup guitar and it was said to be way ahead of its time. And uh, I don't think it was that successful because of that. This particular model was launched in 1962, okay? Talking about innovations, I found this, um, one of the original catalogs here. I'll put it on screen and I'm gonna read some of this because it just kind of gives you a, a, a taste of what they were all trying to do at the time with their innovations on guitars. And this, the short scale jazz guitar, is, uh, it's got a list of the innovations uh, I'm going to read some of this to you, not all of it, but it's got wild dog treble, <laughs> the guitarist's delight, <laughs> exclamation mark. He says, with the elimination of unnecessary treble distortion, Burns Electronics engineers are able to produce this high treble, which is 25% more than normal, exclamation mark. Pure tonal brilliance shines through and seemingly increases the volume. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, it goes on. Uh, string lock bridge system. Synchromatic vibrato. This hypersensitive unit is fully synchronized with the string lock bridge and provides the player with optimum ease of control. Blah, blah, blah. Polyester finish. Ooh, poly this is polyester finish, incidentally. The finishing of curved surfaces in this almost indestructible Mirror finish has previously been well nigh impossible. Well nigh impossible. It's very British, isn't it? But Burns, having pioneered a wonderful new technique, are proud to present their new guitars in this finish. A vast range of colours is possible with polyester. Is that? No, it's not very good, is it? Um, that's meant to be a plummy British accent, but um, it doesn't work with, from an Essex bloke, does it? <laughs> Uh, anyway, you know, you get the idea, um, all these innovations. And um, again, another, another advert from um, 1962 on the screen there. This is 62, this one. Three sensational new models from Burns. They've got the six-string bass, which I think might be next on my list because I've always want, fancied one of those um, Squire... Um, Sixes, what do they call them? Squire sixes, you know what I mean. And this squ Burns six string bass seems to be a, the British version of that. So there you go, that's, that's all I know really for now, but they, early 60s, they, they did their thing and you know, all sorts of players played them. But 65 that they were sold, I think they were successful, but they were sold to Baldwin, Baldwin, another um, manufacturer, and then, okay, Jimmy Burns went on for, for, through the years to do various other stuff, which, which um, you know, you can research if, if you're interested. I think he had quite a long career doing stuff and coming up with innovations, a bit like Leo Fender, really. I think they were sort of fairly similar, weren't they? Their, their paths seem to have been fairly similar. I mean, obviously, Leo Fender was the you know the earliest but um yeah jimmy jimmy burns's career seems to have well 65 that's that was when fender sold to pre to cbs in fact yeah i just just remember I, when i was looking at this, baldwin were outbid by cbs for fender and they bought burns instead so yeah interesting isn't it if you're interested in that sort of thing anyway so there you go, that's that. And, and Burns have kind of lain, they've, they've had various goes at, at relaunching um, more recently. I understand that this model is kind of a stopgap. It's now owned by a consortium, one of whom is Lee Anderton, the captain. Um, and, you know, he confirmed that in a recent review of this current range of burns and and what he actually said was this is kind of a stopgap they they want to keep keep it bubbling over 
they're in the process of of redesigning some of the guitars and they just they've launched this one and some of the others at the moment that are available just to keep it going and there'll be there'll be news on burns the brand and more stuff coming soon we hope so i thought i'd pick this up because yeah 299 pounds and um this was the cheapest one i actually got this from guitar guitar by the way so sorry sorry captain but they were 30 quid cheaper <laughs> so <laughs> they got my pounds on this occasion um this comes in a couple of colors um this one which is the red burst and baby blue which looks great as well doesn't it and then some other i mean i i won't go through it, but just a couple of the other models in in the burns current burns range is the um <laughs> i've lost I've, I've lost my notes where's my notes the marquee this is the big old one that looks i think it looks like a bison so i think that they were the same shape and the and the jazz six which looks great doesn't it and there, there's there's a whole range of old older really cool looking vintage issues like the trisonic there you go that one it'd be really cool if they reissue some of those wouldn't it i think yeah i think there's 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 something here if they get it right so yeah well let's say anyway let's have a look and see what this one's like shall we it's a nice color in it look at that i'm just looking at that neck it's right okay let's start the specs akume body very lightweight mahogany type wood that's the sort of that's the wood that eastman use in their guitars isn't it and that's very highly rated that looks to be i'm going to say that's one piece actually looks to be a single piece that Ooh. <laughs> maple neck bolt on neck as you can see nice little neck plate there this is the club series I wanted to get into bogged down into the different series but obviously the club series is an affordable range made somewhere yeah made offshore <laughs> I'm just gonna say offshore I don't think it's necessarily relevant to be too specific these days because CNC machines are the same everywhere and quality control. I don't think you can isolate it to different companies, countries, sorry, companies, companies or companies works as well. Companies and countries. You can isolate it to different companies, but not necessarily different countries. That makes sense, doesn't it? I hope so, because it's staying in. Um, yeah, right. What was I talking about? Waffling again. Rosewood fingerboard. These frets look nice and chunky, and it's got a zero fret, I noticed as well, which I always quite like. Zero fret, rosewood fretboard. We'll have a closer look at these frets in a minute when we get the strings off. C profile neck. That's what they say. Let's have a look at the uh, profile and measurements on the screen now. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements up at the 12th fret. So it's, um, yeah, C profile. It's not fat and it's not particularly thin. Uh, we'll maybe comment on how comfortable that is later on when we do the wrap up, shall we? The headstock, it's kind of, kind of a, 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 bat, a bat wing, bat wing headstock, like those, um, like the Epiphone um, things, you know, Olympics and stuff like that. Uh, it's quite cool. and. I think that is true to some of the original Burns designs. Flat six aside. Burns branded tuners. <laughs> I'm not getting excited looking at those, but you know, we'll we'll see if they're any good later. Um, chrome hardware, they say. So yeah, what's, what do they call this tremolo? I'm going to have to refer to my notes now. This is called a Burns three bolt knife edge tremolo. There you go. As you can 
clearly see from the back there, uh, it looks to be based on the Fender design. We'll have a closer look in a second. Burns Trisonic pickups, which I mentioned earlier. Most famous thing probably about Burns in the current day are the pickups, because I think that's probably something that everyone's familiar with. We'll have a look under there in a minute. Burn style knobs. They're like oven knobs. They're great. I like them. And a three-way switch. Um, right, yeah. I think that's. I think it's time to whip the strings off and uh, have a feel of the frets and um, dig a little bit deeper. Let's get on with it. First things first. Let's weigh it. 7 pound 2 ounces which is 3.24 kilos so I love a lightweight guitar it's just something just so easy to you know <laughs> do that to <laughs> so there you go looking at the fingerboard rosewood fingerboard rosewood fingerboard looks nice I could do with a bit of a drink and the frets uh, could do with a bit of a polish but they f they look and they feel very nice indeed <laughs> for a, for an affordable guitar actually look really tidy oh it looks like it's kind of looks like it's got a rolled edge as well Yeah, it feels, it feels nice. Do some close-up for you there so you can have a, have a gander yourself close-up. Nice job. Yeah, nice job. Nothing, nothing to complain about there. I haven't played it yet, so I can't say if it's got any, well, what it's, you know, buzzing or anything like that, but you know, it looks good so far. 22 frets. Uh, I think it's a 12 inch radius. I'm guessing that. I didn't actually pick that up from the specs, but I'm guessing that's a 12 inch radius. Zero fret, as I think I mentioned earlier. Uh, a nice, it's got an open truss rod hole. <laughs> I nearly said cover, but it's not. It's a hole, isn't it? It hasn't got a cover. It's got a nice, neat, open hole. That's kind of like a Fender style string tree one. And it's got this um, <laughs> innovative plastic stick on, or nailed, looks like it's nailed on. It's pinned on a little logo plate, brand plate, Burns SSJ, that says. It's pretty cool. It's cool, isn't it? It's, quite, look, it's got a nice look. I like the look. I do like the look of this logo on the scratch plate. It's got a slightly different kind of design to the, the Strat, hasn't it? It's kind of got a more, <laughs> more, a more, you know, <laughs> it's got that. And uh, it looks cool. I think it's cool. I like it. It look. do you know what? It really does, though, remind me of the sort of guitars that we had in the 70s, although Burns was probably out of our, you know, it wasn't a beginner's guitar, Burns, I don't think. It was a professional guitar. But it's almost like the a lot of those Japanese imports were kind of based on some of these things, you know, like they were more quirky. Yeah. I think you know what I mean, don't you? Anyway, let's carry on. I'm going to I'm going to remove this plastic. Ooh, it's quite well stuck on. I'm going to regret saying I'll do that. I'll speed it up. <laughs> We've learned they use a particularly strong brand of adhesive on their, on their plastic. So I'm not looking forward to taking the pickup plastic off. Anyway, uh, where should we go? 
Look in the back passage first. Yeah. As the actress said to the bishop. Yeah, I know. Somebody else would have said that if I hadn't. There you go. Just a... Uh, Looks, looks like the same as the Fender one, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, I think it's worth it's worth saying that this is probably just a copy of the Fender one rather than the original that was on this guitar. I'll show you some pictures that I've got off the interweb of the original. It didn't look anything like this, does it? So... Perhaps that didn't work very well, or um, perhaps it's just easier to recreate or to use a Fender style one. It says Burns of London stamped on it, but uh, it definitely looks like the, the Fender one, doesn't it? To me, I'm no expert though. Okay, let's take some pickup readings. And this, of course, is where we find out. If it's all working, appears to be. All right, controls on 10. So the Bridge Burns Trisonic pickup is reading 7.43K. And the inductance reading on that is 2.2 Henry's. And then let's look at the neck. Burns Trisonic, 6.4K. 1.68 Henry's is the inductance. Yeah. Just take a middle reading. Combine 3.49k. They're interesting readings, aren't they? Let's um let's pop them up and have a look underneath and see what's going on. Right, let's see how much wiggle room we've got. Oh god, left a screw in. One of these days I'll get a, one of them electric screwdrivers. Right. Take two. Here we go. Aha. Ooh. There you go. There's a good old look inside under the um, under the scratch plate. Alpha Pots, made in Korea. Here's a shot of a close-up shot so we can we can maybe see what the value of that cap is. I can't see it with me naked eye. And the switch, it's kind of like an analog uh, switchcraft copy type thing. Looks, you know, all looks do. It's got a tiny little bit of shielding there on the under where the controls are. And the pickups are just identified as TS1 neck, TS1 bridge. There you go. That's what that looks like. Let's flip that back over. Feed that back in there. Good. Well, that's that then, isn't it? So what we're going to do now is we're going to put, well, put it back together, put some strings on it and plug it in and see what it sounds like. See you in a minute. That's what it sounds like unplugged. Sounds really nice here, to my ears here. It's got a really nice, bright sort of twang to it. I suppose that's a kind of a, it's kind of a stratty thing, which is no doubt aided by the, the metal block on there. But you know, you can hear that's really nice and bright.
Right, let's see what it sounds like plugged in, shall we? Same rig as always. On the board today, I've put a, a TC Spark Booster on there because I thought I'd use a, try a little bit of a treble booster, given that we've got these Burns Trisonics and that was a Brian May thing, or is a Brian May thing, isn't it? So I put this on there and I've put the rat pedal on there and I've had a muck around and they seem to sound <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> Quite nice, actually. I'm not going to use them for a bit. Um, you know, obviously, I can't use pedals, can I, reviewing a guitar? <laughs> you need to sound what the guitar sounds like through the Princeton 65, as always, clean. And then if I do use the pedals at all, of course, I'll show you. Via Crocs Gam. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, let's step on it. See what happens. I'll start on the bridge pickup. You'll be able to see what I'm doing there, hopefully. I just have a muck around. That's with it rolled off a bit. That seems very sensitive. I'm rubbish at these, this style, because I never play strats. So I'm not used to this style, whammy bar at all. It's, it's got far too much finesse for me. Also, I should mention what I've did is tighten the screws in the back, these, to pull it back so it's resting hard on, so it won't go that way. So it's not floating like that, you know what I mean? It's only going that way. <laughs> For me, just adds a little bit more tuning stability, I believe. So I won't do a lot of that, but... Still in tune, I think, isn't it? It sounds nice. Right. Neck. A couple of those had wandered a bit.
like knocking that switch when I go to, to play with the volume control. Yeah, that's it's in a bit of an odd position. Bit of an awkward position there. Particularly because there. <laughs> Can't help it. When you go to the middle position, it's been dying to get into the middle position because it's got this. Quack. Adds that quack. Keep knocking it though. That's crying out for something, isn't it? I can't stop it now. Stop it. Let's try something. Look at the volume control. That works. And the tone. in the quack position. Well, I liked it. I really liked it. What a great sounding guitar. I hope you agree. I've, I've been obviously editing this week's film and listening to it back and the playing. I didn't think it was necessarily any good, and but, you know, it sounds good and I've salvaged some good stuff, I think. The outro jam as well, where I really turn up the wick. I'm really loving it. I'm, I'm getting into it. You can see, yeah, I do get comments. Some Sometimes people say, oh, yeah, you're getting into that. This one, yeah, I, <laughs> I think I was. I really think I was. Uh, which is, I suppose it's, it's, <laughs> it's an S type. I didn't realise, actually, when I started, that it's, it's definitely an S type guitar, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a Strat copy, really. Isn't it? Yeah, Strat copy. It sounds nothing like a Strat. Thank heavens. 
because I'm not a Strat fan, but this sounds fat. These are like more like P90s than normal single coils, aren't they? Yeah, I'm going with that. These are these are definitely more like P90s. And they they got a really nice kind of grit to them. And you know, sonically the guitar resonates whether or not it's just a combination of the stuff, but I was going to say whether or not it's the metal block or, or what. I, I don't know. I don't care. It just sounds good. Way, way better than the price tag would suggest. And, right, well, I can now talk about playability. I gave the truss rod a little tweak just to put a little bit of relief in because it was a little bit buzzy on the low strings, which is not uncommon. Just a little... A little tweak and it was fine and I didn't adjust the action at all. And the neck was, well, I say obviously comfortable because I was playing it without any um, any obvious difficulty, I suppose. I was, you know, I was playing up and down. I mean, I didn't try and get too far up the dusty end because it's not an SG, is it? But, you know, I was moving up and down okay. So I think I found the neck profile worked for me. Yeah, tune and stability, dead good. And I used, I used the whammy bar a little bit. I was just watching it back while I was editing. I was surprised that actually a couple of times it looked like I knew what I was doing as well. I didn't. Pure luck. It's good though, sounded good. I liked it. I like it. It's quirky, isn't it? it it's quirky and this is probably the least quirky guitar in there in any of their lineups, I think. We're just sort of looking back, the, the models that they've released over the years. I mean, obviously, they started, I think, with the Bison, you know, the big old, massive old thing, you know, ahead of its time. And I can see why that was a limited success. The, the Shadows one, the, the Marquee, you know, the bigger one, that is probably... Well, almost certainly the most recognisable Burns model, I think. With a big old, what's that headstock on that? The shovel, I'm going to put a picture up there. Shovel headstock. Yeah, I'm not, I'm really not sure about that. I, mean, I wonder if that was kind of held them back a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to undermine the success that Burns had and the standing that the brand has. A lot of people... Hugely respected, you know, Burns is hugely respected, but their heyday was in the 60s, I believe. I'm led to believe, you know, I've done a little bit more reading up. The heyday was in the 60s. That was when they were, you know, had their most success, you know. Baldwin, you know, took over in mid-60s, 65. And I think by the 70s, they were kind of, you know, they they closed or stopped making that particular range of guitars, the original lineup. I believe, I mean, you know, don't don't quote me on any of this. I'm learning myself, but I'm picking up that they were pretty much done by the 70s. They kept trying to um reinvent themselves. They had, you know, had some futuristic guitars out in the 70s. I think Mark Boland played one called uh Something Flight. I'm not I can't remember. I'll try and whack a picture up there if I can find one. But then, you know, they've had kind of various attempts at, you know, regaining ground, I suppose. So just to wrap this up, I want to make an announcement. Burns London, I'm rooting for you. I think it's high time we showed those Yanks a thing or two about good old-fashioned British design. Don't you think? Although you may want to rethink the shovel head. Yeah, just saying. Well, that's it for this week. Um, yeah, that's it. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The playing the guitar, that is. I've thoroughly enjoyed playing the guitar and, and talking to you guys, obviously. Um, so that's it. Yeah, nothing else. No extra content in this week. I'm going to keep you wanting more this week. It's not likely, is it? No, I've got some real exciting stuff planned, actually, for several weeks' time. Okay, I'm trying to line up an interview with... 
someone in the Burns team uh, for the future, find out a little bit more about what their plans actually are. And tomorrow I'm going on a guitar safari to London, to the London. Um, I finally, let me show you something. I've got a plan to get rid of the, the flying V. You know, the expensive one, the expensive one with the broken and repaired headstock that surprisingly nobody wanted to buy. Well, I'm trading it for something extremely exciting. So I'm going on a guitar safari tomorrow to uh, the London to, uh, to meet a mate of mine and, and do a trade. And we're gonna have a look around Denmark Street. That's the plan. So if it all goes to plan, you know, what could go wrong? Um, yeah, if it all goes to plan next week, there'll be some, well, some interesting content, I hope, for you. That's always the plan anyway. So, yeah, come back and find out. Next week, same time, same place, right here. I'll be here. I look forward to seeing you. Cheers for now. Ta-da. Mm -hmm.